The transhumanism movement is evolving as the lines between man and machine are being more and more blurred these days because human beings want to become like gods, creating new life forms on this planet. So in this video, we're going to go over this, synthetic biology explained. We're going to take a look at this article, synthetic organisms are about to challenge what alive really means. We're also going to look at these various DNA synthetic biology companies that are popping up all over the place. Um, and we're going to take a look at this article, um, which shows that Heather Reisman just donated $100 million dollars to AI research at the University of Toronto. So before we get into all that, I would ask that you head on over here to pressfortruth.ca slash donate. This is where you can uh, contribute a one-time donation with PayPal or you can uh, contribute Bitcoin or become a patron or join the Patreon alternative. Um, and uh, of course, the best way to support this channel is just to click the thumbs up button and uh, share this video with your friends and family. So if you want to support my work, please check us out at pressfortruth.ca slash donate. All right, so when we're going to talk about synthetic biology and, and new synthetic organisms being created on this planet, we have to talk about transhumanism. So to start this video off, let's just get a, a, a brief a description, a, a general uh, idea of what transhumanism is so we can have a, a, a foundational base for this video moving forward. Uh, Wikipedia describes it as... Uh, an international philosophical movement that advocates for the transformation of the human condition by developing and making widely available sophisticated technologies to greatly enhance human intellect and physiology. Transhumanist thinkers study the potential benefits and dangers of emerging technologies that could overcome fundamental human limitations as well as the ethical limitations of using such technologies. The most common transhumanism thesis is that human beings may eventually be able to transform themselves into different beings with abilities so greatly expanded from the current condition as to merit the label of post-human beings. Post-human beings. So we're literally talking about a new category of humans. You know, they're, they're talking about a time in the future where there's going to be human beings and then there's going to be post-human beings. Beings. Not, you know, God created human beings, man created men, uh, living simultaneously side by side. Uh, that's what this essentially is referring to. And so how are they going to do this? Well, this is going to be done through this new study of synthetic biology. And this article uh, does a pretty good job at explaining it. Synthetic biology is a new interdisciplinary area that involves the application of engineering principles to biology. It aims at the redesign and fabrication of biological components and systems that do not already exist in the natural world. Synthetic biology combines chemical synthesis of DNA with growing knowledge of ge uh, genomics to enable researchers to quickly manufacture catalog DNA sequences and assemble them into new genomes. Improvements in the speed and cost of DNA synthesis are ena uh, enabling scientists to design and synthesize modified bacterial chromosomes that can be used in the production of advanced biofuels, bioproducts, renewable chemicals, bio-based special specialty chemicals, pharmaceutical intermediates, fine chemicals, food ingredients, and in healthcare sector as well. But obviously, uh, they're bringing this into the biological organisms in, in the field of human development, um, which which brings us to this. Synthetic organisms are about to challenge what alive really means. We need to begin a serious debate about whether artificially evolved humans are our future and if we should put an end to those experiments before it's too late. In 2016, Craig Venter and his team at Synthetic Genom uh, Genomics, Genomics? Genomics? I don't know how to pronounce that announced that they had created a life form called JCVI-SYN 3.0, whose genome consisted of only 473 genes. This stripped-down organism was a significant breakthrough in the development of artificial life, as it enabled us to understand more fully what individual genes do. In the case of JCVI-SNY 3.0, most of them were used to create RNA and proteins. 
preserve genetic fidelity during reproduction and create the cell membrane. The functions of about a third remain a mystery. A Ventures achievements followed an earlier breakthrough in 2014 when Floyd Rosenberg at Rosenberg Lab in California succeeded in creating xenonucleic acid, a synthetic alternative to DNA, using amino acids not found among the naturally occurring four nucleotides. So uh, we're, we're, we're now venturing into synthetic DNA, literally creating the building blocks of life and there are new companies popping up all the time that, that that have been doing this. Look at this one. System Services Solutions in Synthetic Biology. This is a synthetic DNA gene design, gene optimization, and gene synthesis. This company here, uh, Blue Heron, gene synthesis experts. These guys are experts on this here. Uh, founded and solely operated in the USA, Blue Heron Biotechnology Proprietary Gene Maker Technology Platform makes us the true experts in custom DNA design and gene synthesis. Did, did you guys know you could have custom DNA design uh, done? Here, Adam, Tools for Solutions for the Life Sciences, DNA 2.0 Gene Design and Synthesis. Or you got this one. Genomatica, your partner in bioengineered manufacturing. So we got all kinds of these companies popping up all over the place. Um, so it doesn't seem like this kind of research is going to be slowing down anytime soon. In fact, that brings us to the fact that Heather Reisman and Gary Schwartz just donated $100 million to AI research at the University of Toronto. Canadian billionaires and philanthropists uh, Gary Schwartz and Heather Reisman are donating $100 million to the University of Toronto, the largest gift in the school's history towards research and innovation in artificial intelligence. The donation from Schwartz, CEO of Toronto-based private equity firm Onyx Corp., and his wife Reisman, CEO of Indigo Books and Music Inc., will help create the schwartz Reisman Innovation Centre a 750,000 square foot complex that will be home to AI scientists, biomedical experts, entrepreneurs, and startups, the U of T said in a release on Monday. In addition, the money will support the launch of the schwartz Reisman Institute for Technology and Society, which will examine the ethical and societal implications of AI and other emerging technologies. Now, why is this concerning to me? Uh, why, you know, the, the fact that... Uh, uh, examining the ethical and societal implications of AI coming from these two? Well, that's because Heather Reisman has been on the steering committee of the Bilderberg Group for about 15 years. Um, if you're not familiar with Bilderberg, just use the search feature on my YouTube channel and you will find all my coverage on Bilderberg. Uh, I've been covering it since 2006 and Heather Reisman has been there since 2002 right on up till around 2016, I believe. So, and not only just attending, she's on the steering committee. You know, she, she was involved with picking the attendees to invite, you know, she chose who to invite to the meeting. So th this is a seriously powerful and influential uh, person who is involved with Bilderberg, who's gonna be the one who is behind looking into whether or not AI is gonna be ethical or not. Guys, uh, this is not looking good. Um, the fact that Heather Reisman is the one behind this is, is an eye-opener. Um, th the fact that she's donating to the university is interesting. I'm sure uh, you're well aware of the scandal right now with all these people paying big money to get their kids into Ivy League schools. Well, I don't know if you heard about this, but <laughs> Dr. Dre was boasting about his daughter getting into uh, this school all on her own. And then, oh yeah, he remembers he donated $70 million to that school. Uh, Dr. Dre's attempt to throw... Sh uh, uh, here, on Saturday, Dr. Dre posted a photo with the caption, My daughter got accepted into USC all on her own, no jail time. And then quickly deleted it after it was pointed out that in 2013, he and Beats by Dre co-founder Jimmy Levine donated $70 million to the school to establish the Jimmy Levine and Andre Young Academy for Arts. So, guys... Behind huge donations like this, there's always 
ulterior motives. And when it's coming from somebody who is a former steering committee member on the Bilderberg Group, that should be very concerning to you guys, as it is to me. Um, so I wanted to bring this one to your attention uh, today, folks. Synthetic organisms are about to challenge what alive really means. Um, we... Uh, <laughs> This is crazy. We, we need to let people know that this is going on. Synthetic biology is, is not the way mankind needs to go. You know, they're trying to become gods. They, they want to be God, you know, uh, uh, creating life forms on this planet. And just the idea that they can't even do so is insanely ridiculous. In fact, it's a lie. Some would say it's, it's a lie that came from the father of lies from the very beginning when the serpent told Adam and Eve that they could be gods. Yeah, you, you guys can be gods. Well, it was a lie then, and it's a lie now. And ever since then, they're still trying to figure it out, trying to put it together, trying to become like God. But folks, it's not going to happen. Um, we are separate from our creator and uh, it's going to stay like that. Um, but this transhumanism movement doesn't seem like it's uh, slowing down anytime soon. So wanted to bring this one to your attention today, folks. Uh, synthetic biology, synthetic organisms. Yeah, that's a thing. So click the thumbs up button. Share this video. If you're new to this kind of information, uh, probably your friends and family will be too. So share this one, folks. We're being heavily censored by the YouTube al algorithms. They don't want my videos to be seen. Um, also, uh, if you do support our efforts here, please check us out at pressfortruth.ca slash donate, uh, where you can contribute to my efforts here. And um, that's all for today, folks. I want to thank you uh, for tuning in and stay tuned. I'm going to have more video reports coming soon. This is Dan Dix reporting for Press for Truth. We all want truth. truth. The truth will set you free. free, free.